Paul Waldman. Tom Schaller is with us now. Gentlemen, we appreciate it. Thank you. Good to Thanks. see you. Thanks. Uh, look, congratulations. Tuesday, the book came out. We've seen the reaction. Uh, Fox News, you guys are a bunch of elitist snobs, I think is <laughs> right. a fair characterization. MSNBC calls you uh, patriots. Uh, I won't do either, but I am a little skeptical. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's start with the title, Rage. Uh, would upset, frustration, anger have been fair? How would you get to rage? Well, it's really white world resentment, which is a known measurable, quantifiable term in the social science literature among sociologists and political science. It's been measured by people like Katherine Kramer in her book, uh, The Politics of Resentment, about rural voters in Wisconsin. But to be perfectly honest, it will confess. You know, booksellers like short yep. titles, like Blink, right, from, uh, uh, what's his name, or, or Nudge. And so white rural rage is three words and five syllables, and white rural resentment just makes a lot more noise. We don't really use the word rage throughout. We're talking about white rural resentment, which is a demonstrable and quantifiable uh, phenomena in rural America. Okay, so you guys have quantified it and you wrote a lot about it. I would argue that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama probably talked about it before you guys were writing about it. Take mm -hmm. a listen. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> and they feel so betrayed by government. It's not surprising them that they I guess you could add to that, President Biden right now is to become ultra MAGA. Is that probably fair? Are, are Democrats missing an opportunity by ridiculing this group of people rather than trying to embrace them? I don't think Democrats are ridiculing them. And you'll notice that. Uh, in those clips, everybody remembers those, right? Because a Democrat said something that, taken out of context or clipped in some way, could be seen as really uncomplimentary to people who live in small towns or rural voters. And they got no end of grief for it. But Republicans can say things that attack people in cities and the people who vote for Democrats all the time, and nobody ever blinks an eye. And in fact, they often get rewarded for it. I mean, you can play that clip from Barack Obama. If you look at the whole thing, what he said was that people in small towns and rural areas have felt like both parties aren't providing uh, them the benefits that they deserve. They're not helping them economically. And that's why they turned to these kind of culture war issues to help define their political okay. identity. It was absolutely right. Now, you can argue about well, how he phrased it and things like that. But it was actually a, an accurate diagnosis of what's going so on in small-town yeah, yeah, America. Can I just yeah. add a little piece? J.D. Vance, when he ran for senator, sure. this is a guy who criticized Trump when he ran in 2016, but then he wanted to be a senator. And what did he say? I've got to go to New York City, a city he'd been to many times. This is the horse whisperer to rural America. And he said, is it more like season one or season four of The Walking Dead? In other words, he criticized New York City as essentially a zombie apocalypse. Now, imagine Chuck Schumer, the Democratic majority leader, said, i got to go to a fundraiser in southwest Ohio, where J.D. Vance lives, not in downtown city, Cincinnati, which has a higher per capita crime rate than New York City. Let me finish. He lives in a 1.4 million gated community home in the suburbs of Cincinnati. And Chuck Schumer said, I got to go to southwest Ohio. Do I bring my own meth and overalls? If he trafficked in the worst and unfair and incorrect racial stereotypes about white rural voters, he would have been crucified. But J.D. Vance does that, and he gets rewarded with a Senate seat. Right? Just, look, it, the way everybody talks about this is important. And I, I think you make a good point. This, I think you guys so, uh, cited this, urban, rural versus urban values. 68% of rural residents say urban Americans exhibit different values. 48% of urbanites describe rural Americans as having values different from them. Right. Uh, having come from rural America, I, would, I don't know who, who's saying no to this because it makes sense to me. But if you think about rural rage, let's just say it exists, or resentment, whatever you want to call it on these cultural war issues. Why are people who say criminals who should be deported, who are illegal aliens, who are to commit crime, should be deported? Well, now they're xenophobic. If you say, I want people who commit crimes in big cities locked up, you're racist. If I want my little girl to play on a sports team with only little girls and not big boys or even little boys, I'm anti-gay. Why does telling people you're anti-gay, you're xenophobic, and you're racist for having those beliefs not make them rageful? Well, look, we have dozens and dozens of polls and studies that we cite, and you will look in vain if you're looking in our book for any kind of ad hominem or insults. That's not our goal. What we are talking about is a real political problem. And one of the things that happens in rural America is that, you know, people always say, oh, well, the Democrats have abandoned it. And that's 
largely true. But you know what? Republicans have abandoned rural America, too. They keep getting elected, but they're not doing anything to actually help the voters in rural America. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.